So today's our last day at the Outer Banks. We've spent seven days here. We're about to leave and we're gonna head down to North Carolina. We got a place about 10 miles north of the state line of South Carolina. So we're going to Lumberton KOA. We leave North Carolina and we go down to Count Lake Jasper in Hardyville, South Carolina. It was real close to Hilton Head, South Carolina, and just a little bit north of Savannah, and then boogied on down to Columbus RV Resort in St. Augustine, Florida. Hi, I'm Wayne. And I'm Norma from Our Vacationer. Follow us as we travel in our motorhome in Jeep Cherokee. Subscribe and click the notification bell. We drove out to Jockey's Ridge State Park. That was one of the things we really wanted to see, and it was really nice. It's super, super hot. We were we were terribly hot, but it's the tallest sand dunes on the east coast. They call and, it living sand dunes because it yeah, moves. Yeah, it and... changes with the ocean winds. That goes, it, it goes anywhere from sixty to eighty feet according to how the winds have blown. I guess if they've had a hurricane or whatever. And we had thought about trying to walk up the sand dunes and go over and walk out through, but we saw lots of young people walking up it and they were having a terrible time getting up it because the sand just slides down and you just keep have to keep digging well, and going unbearably hot too. Yeah. i mean just standing there on yeah. the pier the little wooden deck walkway that we took so that you can go out and see the entry to it uh that was really pretty i mean i enjoyed mm -hmm. just sitting there yeah, on the bench pretty. and watching the other people mm -hmm. try to make it but there was quite a few younger people that were in much better shape than we are and they gave up on it yeah. so we didn't even try and there were a lot of people out there flying kites. We could see that going on. Uh, they say you can hang glide out there if the wind's just right. You have to and, have the license, proper license yeah. to do that. And you can take uh, snow sleds out there and sled down the sand dunes. A lot of people do that. So uh, we did the old folks thing and just went and watched everybody else try to make it up the dunes. We left the sand dunes, and we were trying to catch up on all the things that we didn't get to see during the week. Mm -hmm. uh, we had high-priority things we wanted to do, and then lower-priority things. So uh, sand dunes was kind of low, because we knew we weren't going to be able to walk up and down those dunes. And uh, Jeanette's Pier, uh, I, now that I've been there, I would have ranked that yeah. a little higher on our list. It we should have gone there more than once. It was yeah, nice. It, it really was nice. It was $2 a person to go out on the pier. Uh, you can fish. You can, you know, just sit there and bird watch or whatever you want to do. But the beach itself was beautiful. beautiful. The view from the end of the pier looking back at, at the Outer Banks was beautiful. Mm -hmm nice breeze on a hot day that felt real good and you need to go at uh, sunset time because the sunset was beautiful yeah and they have a little museum there mm -hmm. you can go in and see the you know maritime fish and different things we didn't go in it's an extra cost to do that so we really just sat out on the bench and walked out to the end of the pier and the breeze was awesome it, it really mm -hmm. was and and they have lifeguards or had them at the time we were there they had lifeguards watching out for uh, people there was a couple of uh, like a man and a teenage maybe his son i guess yeah. i don't know uh, they were out there on those little boogie board things riding the waves yeah, swimming out there riding the waves out. Back there. that was entertaining so we really enjoyed that it was a pretty area uh, not real busy but busy enough um so I, I would rank that higher on our list next mm -hmm. time. So if you're planning on going, yeah. Jeanette's Pier was very nice. At sunset. Next. Uh, the last thing for the day, and I guess our last thing that we'll get to see on the Outer Banks, is the Fort Raleigh. That's where the Lost Colony was. We wanted to go out there and see where the Lost Colony was. We had a really good ranger. She was entertaining with the way she speaks. Yes, she was. She was very uh, knowledgeable. We got to see where the actual colony was built. And to this day, they still don't know what happened to that colony. But they assume that the settlers moved on with the Indian tribes of that area and, and lived with this them. This is Fort Raleigh National Historic Site. It's where the British settled a colony here. And a year later, they came back to bring supplies and to check on them. 
and there was nobody. Everybody was gone. They never did figure out what happened to the lost colony. I think the engines got them. Probably did. We also wanted to go out to the island to see the lighthouse on the Roanoke Island. Uh, this was the second thing we did on the Roanoke Island while we were out there. The tour didn't cost anything. Accurate. Yeah, how far does the shot go? How about 100 yards? <laughs> oh my god, all, right. all that effort for 100 yards? Well, well 100 loud yards is noise. better than 50 yeah. yards. You better yeah. start preparing when they're... With how much really accuracy? Boring. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a smooth board barrel, so whatever bounces, it That's takes it. last is what yeah. it does. Gold in those using that gold to expand their glorious Catholic empire. The, the empire in which the sun never sets. Mm -hmm. First referred to the Spanish. Now England, Spain's little brother, little Protestant brother, <laughs> getting, getting a little jealous, right? And they want to start colonization efforts of their own, trying to get the same riches to expand their empire. So our first English expedition out here to the Outer Banks, 1584. It's about 40 guys, and they are not here to form a, par a permanent colony. They are the scouting party. So they have two main objectives. Number one, to find a place for a permanent colony. And number two, who's already in North Carolina at the time? Yeah, the indigenous people. The indigenous people. You know their name? The Croatoan tribe is part of it. But they use the umbrella term the Carolina Algonquin. Algonquin is a family of languages. So we all have different tribes and they all speak dialects similar enough to each other where they can communicate. So the Carolina Algonquin are already here. Our natives, they see Europeans. And what do you think their immediate response is to these outsiders? Not good. Interest. Interest. They're curious, absolutely. But our English men are gonna start a trade relationship with the natives. They want to be friendly with their new subjects, right, in their new land. They want conversion to happen, so they're going to be friendly to the natives. So they're getting food, they're getting goods, and they've established a pretty good relationship with the Carolina Algonquin. Two tribes in particular, the Roanoke tribe here on Roanoke Island, and the Croatoan down on Croatoan. And then the Roanoke tribe invites the English to settle here next to their village on Roanoke Island. So they have completed both of their missions, made nice with the natives, and found a place to live. They're only here for six weeks, mission accomplished, time to go back now. The natives have curiosity more than anything. They're not automatically like, these people want to kill us. You know, let's react that way. They're, they're curious. And they're going to elect two men, one from each tribe. Names you've probably heard of before, Manio from the Croatoan tribe, and Wanchi from the Roanoke tribe. And they elect those two men to go back to England. Six hours later. Okay, we pulled in at the Lumberton KOA in Lumberton, North Carolina, just barely north of the South Carolina border. That was the check-in and office area right next to the interstate. And then all the sites were numbered. They got one centralized bathhouse, laundry, and the internet is good you can you know it's usable a little slow but it's usable however i got better internet using my verizon hotspot so basically it's just camper 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 not a lot else there is a little playground for kids and they do have a k9 bark park for your pets they do have a swimming pool okay it almost says they have a swimming pool i didn't see that Jasper Campground. Camp Lake Jasper. Camp. Eagle Scout Circle. Look at there. Wow. Got some nice rigs in here. Mm -hmm. It's a nice gated area pulling in. The lady was extremely helpful. We checked in about two hours early, which a lot of places won't tolerate that. 
But we left thinking the traffic was going to be worse than it was. Oh, we went 15 through 30 right there. Yeah. Nice little concrete patio with a picnic table. Yep. Yay, we're here. Okay, currently we are at the Camp Lake Jasper in Hardyville, which is just a sneeze away from Hilton Head. A lot of golf courses and fancy neighborhoods and stuff in Hilton Head. This campground is real nice. I'm not a big fan of the pea gravel uh, pads when you get down on your hands and knees to put your jack stand blocks and things like that down under the camper it sure does hurt and it sure was hot it's 92 degrees here today but we've enjoyed it the trip to Hilton Head was nice beautiful homes nice golf courses pretty drive around the campground itself is very nice a lot of big rigs here, so it's big rig friendly. They do have a swimming pool, bathhouse, laundromat. I'm not sure how much the uh, laundry is. We didn't. We have our own, so we didn't go use theirs. Uh, the site that we're on was a little bit unlevel, back to front. We almost had to get the front tires off the ground, so we left the airbags flat, and then picked the front up and. Got it level. Yep. <laughs> All right, catch you on the next video. Look up here and we'll show you a link on how to get to the next video. And thanks for watching and come back and see us on the next video. See ya. Hi friends, thank you for joining us on this video. If you would, if you have not already, we need a real big favor. Not like a kidney or a lung or anything, just a real big favor. Hit that subscribe button right down there, that red one, right in there. And when you hit that, you'll see a little bell. Click on the bell so you get notified of all our future videos. And give us a thumbs up. We would appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Have a great day. See you in the next video.